LinkedIn for business. Hi, Louise Brogan, who is me? <laughs> All right, my name is Louise Brogan. I have a podcast called LinkedIn with Louise. It is 187 episodes old, I realized this morning. So we're approaching our um, 200th episode, which is brilliant. I have a YouTube channel called LinkedIn with Louise. Um, and most of you, I think, are probably already connected to me on LinkedIn. If you're not, please do come and connect with me and send me a message um, and let me know what you think of the webinar. I also am a speaker. Sadly, I haven't been on too many stages in the last 18 months. Um, been quite a few virtual stages. And next week, we'll be talking at a public sector marketing conference, a global one, which is exciting. So it's good to get back out there in front of um, new audiences. Um, and that came through LinkedIn, that came through a LinkedIn message. So we can talk more about that at the end. What opportunities can you use LinkedIn for? I started my business back in 2013. That's when I quit my job, um, although I was doing social media before that. So I've been around for a while um, and I've niched down to LinkedIn in the last four or five years, I'd say now. Um, and hopefully that serves you well because I really like getting into the nitty gritty of LinkedIn. Why LinkedIn? Okay, basically LinkedIn is the platform where people are going there for business. We go to Facebook to check in on friends and family. We go to Facebook for the Facebook groups that we're all in. Uh, yesterday or this morning, a message popped up in my Facebook and it was from, honestly, it was from eight years ago with the primary school parents, so it's the elementary school parents, and um, when my son was five, he's now 13, when we arranged to go out for cocktails as new mummies in the school, and we were still in a messaging group. And that is what Facebook is for. People don't go to Facebook to learn about your products and services. They go to Facebook to connect with their community, their friends and family. They go to Twitter to find out what's going on in the world, what's the news, what's the score in the women's tennis um, who is this Emma Raducanu anyway? Let's go and find out about her. We go to Twitter for that. Instagram, we go to because we want a bit of escapism. We want to like scroll through um, people's lovely images, feel a bit better about the world for a, a minute, um, laugh at some Instagram reels. Um, and it's a bit of inspiration and a bit of diversion. You may go to TikTok. I don't. My teenage daughter, it's her platform of choice. There's other platforms, of course there is, but the reason that people go to LinkedIn is to connect with their business network and their business relationship. And that's why you're here tonight to learn more about how to do that. And it's interesting because the reason why people go to LinkedIn is also the reason that puts a lot of people off doing anything on LinkedIn is because it's full of your professional network. So we'll get into that in a little while. How I work with clients is I talk about um, looking at the four pillars to using LinkedIn successfully. And those four key pieces are your LinkedIn profile, your personal profile, that is, your LinkedIn network, who's in it? When did you connect with them? Are you connecting with them? Do, do you like them? Do you, are you interested in what they're talking about? Your LinkedIn content. What do you put on LinkedIn that's going to let people be interested in your business and know that you are the expert that you are? What format does that content take? Um, how do you write it? How do you write it in a way that people actually bother to engage with it? And then LinkedIn messaging, which, like I just alluded to earlier, is where the business on LinkedIn gets done. It's where people invite you to speak at their conference. It's where Someone reaches out to you, says, would you like to come on my podcast? And um, I see what you're talking about here, Elizabeth Hall, about education. And we have a podcast about education. I would like to invite you as a guest on my podcast. Just picked an Elizabeth. Sorry, Elizabeth. Um, so messaging is where the business actually takes place on LinkedIn, which means that most of the time you don't really see the business interactions on LinkedIn, because if you're looking at the news feed, um, the people who comment on your content on the newsfeed aren't necessarily going to be the people who reach out 
to ask you how to work with them or to set up a discovery call, etc. Uh, it's all it all happens behind the scenes, mostly. So we're going to look at these four pieces today. And I actually talk about this sometimes as a three legged stool where the profile is the seat and the content, the messaging and the network are the three legs holding up the seat. And if you pull one of those legs away, the seat falls over. Um, and if you take away the seat, well, all you've got is three sticks. So let's look at your LinkedIn profile. We're kind of going to go through, if you imagine we're looking at LinkedIn, some of you might be looking at your LinkedIn while I'm talking. Um, we start at the top and the key place you want to start is your photograph. You want to have a photograph that is up to date. Um, if we see you on Zoom at the end of this for Q&A, then you're going to look like the person that I think you're going to look like. I forgot to say, I forgot to say, I meant to start before I start talking about this. I do have um, an offer for you guys today. I will tell you all about it before we do the Q&A, um, but make sure that you hang about because it is a super duper duper offer that's just only for you guys on the webinar tonight. Um, if you're on my email list and have been for a while, you know that I do these webinars about once or twice a year, that's it. Um, and the reason I'm doing this one is because it's something my clients ask for help with on LinkedIn, how to do a webinar and get people to sign up for your webinar. And I thought, well, you know what? You got to walk the walk and talk the talk. So I thought, right, I'll do a webinar. And I've got 100 and, 109 people signed up for tonight, even though only a quarter of you showed up live. Well done, well done for showing up live. But that's why I'm doing the webinar today. It's kind of like, you know, if you want to teach people how to use LinkedIn to get people on webinars to sell to them, you got to actually run a webinar, Louise. So that's why you have the delight of this webinar tonight. Anyway, back to your headshot photograph. It should be a head and shoulders photo of you. You shouldn't have anybody else in the photograph. You should not have you holding a drink. You shouldn't have sunglasses on. Don't be wearing a hat. Um, you should be recognizable. So when I meet you, hopefully one day in person, I'll know who you are because I've seen your photograph on LinkedIn and it's been taken in the last maybe a year or two. Okay. If it's 10 years old, it's time to update it. Here's a little tip for your headshot profile photograph. Do you see how mine has got a white background? When you go and look at LinkedIn and you type in, say maybe you type in SEO help and a load of people come up who do SEO. Search engine optimization, guys, if you don't know what that is. Um, but it could be a graphic designer you look for. You'll see lots and lots of little pictures of people's headshots. And the ones that have the clear white background literally pop off the screen. So that is your tip, is to go to your profile photograph, check, am I looking at the camera? Is this a recent photograph of me? Is there busyness around my head? Or is there a clear white background? You can do this in Canva. You just go into canva.com. It's a, um, a website, you can use it for free and you remove the background and that's how you get an image like this. And I really recommend that you do it because now that I've said this to you, you're gonna really notice it on everybody else's headline photographs. Okay, the next thing after your photograph is your headline. Your headline tells people really what you do, who you do it for and, it kind of works as a way to lead people to go over and check out the rest of your profile. You want to include key skills in your headline. Um, I prefer, so when I work with clients, I've just come off a VIP session with a lovely client who's based in California and we were doing her profile. So we do, I do the profile for 90 minutes and then the second half, which her and I've booked in for in a couple of weeks time, we'll be going through how do you actually use LinkedIn to win business? Um, but in that, I was explaining that if you use lots of verbs in your headline, you're kind of wasting space because when you see somebody comment on somebody else's post, it only shows you the first line of their headline. So if the first half, first line of your headline is, I love to help busy women who are running a business with their social media. Nobody's going to see the social media bit. 
which is the key that's going to draw someone to click on your profile to find out more about you. So less of the verbs, less of the small words like I and the and and, and more of the key punchy things that people come to you for, like LinkedIn consultant, podcaster, speaker, LinkedIn trainer. Mine is actually different um, to this now, and I do update it all the time. Oh no, I tried to hide people's names, it didn't work. I'm so sorry if you're on this call and you're one of these people, I apologize profusely. <laughs> Oh dear, it's only, it's only us, nobody else can see. Um, what I don't want you to do is if you are the CEO and founder of your business or you're the managing director or the owner, don't waste your headline by saying that because literally um, founder and CEO, it doesn't, we don't know what any of these people do. We don't know what their businesses do. We don't know what they are interested in, what industries they're even in. Um, so make sure that you really use your headline to help people go and find you. And I will never use that slide again because that was really pitiful hiding of names. I apologize. <laughs> okay, so you got your photograph, you got your headline. Now we're going to write your about section. And this is the bit that does, I think, does the heavy lifting on your LinkedIn profile. So when you see somebody and you see their headline and you think, oh, I'm really interested in that person because actually I need somebody to help me with graphic design for my, my floristry business or whatever it is you do. Um, you then click over their profile and their about section is the bit that you read that makes you decide whether or not you want to connect with that person or reach out to them or get in touch with them or just even follow them. And you'll see people who work in corporate jobs um, sometimes don't even have an about section. So how are we supposed to know anything about them or start a conversation or build a relationship with them if we don't know anything about them? So you want to write this in a way that interests your reader, that leads them to want to reach out to connect with you. Um, likewise, if someone connects with you, and we'll get into this in a little while, doesn't send a message to say why they're connecting with you and you click on their name, scan through their about section and you'll, you'll know whether you want to connect with them or not based on what it says in their about section. You do want to put your key skills in here. You do want to say something about what you want to be known for. So in mine, I think it says like how to work with me and um, you know, the kinds of people that I work with. You can go and check it out after the profile or after the webinar. Um, but include a call to action in your about section. So that could be reach out and connect with me. Um, if you work just with local businesses, then you know, put your phone number in there and get people to give you a call. If you want them to go to your website after looking at your profile, then say, um, please check out my website. If you wanna book a discovery call, invite them to book a discovery call. If you don't put instructions in there on what you want someone to do, it's amazing the impact that that makes, literally inviting someone to connect with you. And I used to see people, I haven't, you don't see this too often, would say, um, my favorite coffee is a latte, what's yours? Tell me in your invitation, your, your connection invitation so that you know someone's actually read your profile. You know, I don't do that, but you know, it might be something you want to, a bit quirky if you want to try it out. So but do, in, do include a call to action. You also want to think about the formatting of this section. Lots of white space so it is easy to read, okay? There's nothing worse than looking at someone's profile <clears throat> and it's got 10 lines all bunched up together. I am telling you, nobody reads that. It's human computer interaction, how the human brain connects with the, the text on screen. Try never to write more than three lines without starting a new paragraph on LinkedIn or any other social media platform, or actually even with your blogging, <laughs> because people can't, they just can't really digest it. And unless they're really, really fascinated in what you're talking about, they won't bother, okay? So make it nice and easy for people to understand what you do and give them instruction, how to reach out and connect with you. Do write it in the first person because this is your personal profile. Add in emojis if it's relevant to you. And that could be like little green ticks or little um, target signs or little money bags, whatever you want. Um, make it interesting so that someone actually wants to read it and makes you sound like the interesting, fascinating person that you are. Because of course you all are. 
All right, underneath there, you've then got your featured section. And this, I love this part. This is about a year and a half old, I think. And um, this is where you can highlight content on LinkedIn, websites that you are on, other media, and that means uh, maybe you wrote an article for Forbes or Medium, maybe you have a video on YouTube, maybe you have a video on your website, maybe you have a blog on your website, and um, put that in here, maybe you have a podcast. Be aware that the thing that shows up at the very start of the featured section is the thing that most people are going to look at. Um, so you can reorder this section to fit what you want to focus on. Um, I also put in the links to articles I've written for Social Media Examiner in there um, because that's, you know, it's a feather in my cap. So it's in my highlighted section, which is the featured section. The rest of your profile is your experience section. And that is really the previous roles you've done. You do not have to include every job you ever did, especially if it doesn't relate to what you do now. So if you do have a significant chunk of your career history um, that you don't want to leave off, put it in there, but make sure that you reduce down the amount of text about that job on LinkedIn. Because when, so say for example, I worked as a project manager for 11 years in the health service, and, and that's condensed down to about two lines in my LinkedIn profile because I don't want to be found by people who are looking for an IT project manager. So make sure that you are really focusing on the things you want to be found for and reduce down the things that you don't want to be found for. Include your education. Uh, if you've ever volunteered, put that in there. Uh, any honors or awards you have received. And then skills and endorsements is a much weightier section than people realize. LinkedIn uses this again to decide whether or not to recommend you to somebody. And they've started to ask, um, I don't know if it's like once a week, I must actually start keeping track, but they've started to ask me, do I endorse my connection for these one of these four skills? And I'll say, would you endorse Louise for A, B, C, or D, or none of the above? So update your skills section because most of us still have the list of skills we had when we first created our LinkedIn profile. And you would be shocked if you went and looked in it and said, I don't do that. I've got nothing to do with that, that thing. Um, so take it out, just remove it from your skills section. Recommendations, very, very powerful on LinkedIn. Pretty challenging to get people to recommend you on LinkedIn. Um, you have to be connected to the person. You have to send them a personalized um, recommendation request. They have to write it. Then you get sent back and you approve it and add it to your recommendation section. Um, I surprised and delighted one of my network on Sunday by sending her an unsolicited recommendation and she was delighted. And uh, she said she'd send me one back and she hasn't. <laughs> she's on this call um, but I'm not surprised because it takes a bit of effort to do one um, so if you can get people to recommend you and send you recommendations it's perfect you cannot add in testimonials from elsewhere uh, yourself it has to come from the other person's account so you know it, that's why it carries so much weight basically because because of all the hoops someone has to jump through in order to get one so try and get some recommendations Add media to your LinkedIn profile, by which I mean, if you have presented slides, if you've spoken on stage, if you have PDFs, like a one page PDF outlining your services, if you have a video of you speaking, can you make a 60 second video and put that on your LinkedIn profile? All of these things really help you with getting seen, getting visible and being found. And of course they take time. Um, but they're worth it. They are worth it. And you'll see, um, this is on my LinkedIn profile, how much of an impact it makes having these little links to different um, websites and videos and articles inside my experience section. Um, the pop of colour on the screen really grabs people's attention. So um, you just have to do it once and it's there. And then, you know, It'll, it'll start to get you noticed and get people checking out your profile. All right, that is a rundown through the LinkedIn profile. That is something I work with clients on in a, it is a 
90 minute session. So we literally did a whistle stop through the key pieces there because um, those are the key things I want you to think about. Um, if you want more help with that, then I am here and you can you know, chat to me um, afterwards about any help that you might want around that. So once you've got your profile ship shape, you're ready to start using LinkedIn. The top 1% on LinkedIn <clears throat> is basically relates to 1% of the 750 million plus people who have LinkedIn accounts. 1% of those people post content on LinkedIn at all. Not like every day at all, which is kind of amazing. It also means this is a huge potential for you to get noticed on this platform. All of those people, those 99% of the other people on LinkedIn who are just scrolling, 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 and uh, maybe they're clicking the like button or the little heart button, uh, but they're not making any content. So it is still like really a, a big wide open space for you to go and stick your flag in and claim some ground. So be in the top 1%. Um, you can check your industry ranking on LinkedIn with the social selling index. This is something, it's a, it's a funny little measure that LinkedIn gives you to tell you where you stand in your network, in your industry, and then in your network. So I was pleasantly surprised this morning to see that I'm in the top 1% of my network at my industry. Yay! Um, where I fall down is engaging with insights. And that, that doesn't mean looking at my own um, analytics because I do that quite a lot. It means that I don't post the stuff that LinkedIn wants me to post because they recommend stuff to you through LinkedIn news. And, you know, one of your network has shared this post. Do you want to share it? Um, I don't tend to do that. So I don't get a, a great score with that. Um, but all the other ones I'm very happy with. Um, I'm full marks on building relationships. So happy days. Um, how to find this yourself is you go to linkedin.com forward slash sales, S-A-L-E-S. -E sorry, my Northern Irish accent. Forward slash S-S-I. So linkedin.com forward slash sales, forward slash S-S-I. And you'll find out your own social selling index. Um, I have a video about this on YouTube if you want to go and check that out to see how to do it properly. Um, but it's kind of interesting. So why do people not post on LinkedIn? I mean, this woman looks like she really wants to post, but she just doesn't know what to do. So you might be using it as your online CV. Maybe you think, oh, I'll, have, I'll get a profile. I'll get someone to write me a profile and then it's there. And that's, that, that's it. So if someone looks me up on LinkedIn, they can see who I am, what I do, and, and then they'll go and look at my website. And that's all I need to do. It, that doesn't work that way. And if you're doing that, you're probably in the 99% of people. And that's fine. But if you really want to use LinkedIn to grow your business, you're going to not use it as your online CV. Maybe you worry about what the, your peers and colleagues think. And I, I see this all the time. I work with a lot of... Um, I like to call them high performing women who have come out of some amazing corporate career, started their own business and they're maybe a year in and they think, oh, no, I couldn't possibly write about. Um, well, let's think of something you couldn't possibly write about. Um, I couldn't possibly write about the genome cluster in the X, Y, Z field of science, because what on earth would my peers think? And you think, well, you're not there for your peers or your colleagues you're there. Well, hopefully the reason you're on this webinar is to grow your network to build your business. So the people who you're going to hire you to work with them and help you, hire you to help them and support them are not your peers and probably don't know anything about the genome cluster. Can you tell I've known nothing about science? Um, so you got to just decide, why am I here? Who am I trying to help? And talk to those people instead and don't be paralyzed by thinking about people being judgy uh, the good thing about linkedin is that it's less judgy than other platforms and that is definitely true um linkedin have done quite a lot of surveying on this and they say that one of the reasons is because um people know that their boss or their professional network will see what they're doing so they aren't rude or abusive <laughs> 
or foolish on LinkedIn, like they may be on other platforms because they're aware of who's watching. So it's, that's interesting. But maybe you understand why should you be posting? Like, what's the point? What's the point of posting, Louise? Somebody told me I don't need to post. I need to get my profile, connect with as many hundreds of people as I possibly can, send them all my sales messages. And that's how you use LinkedIn. It's really not, okay? Reasons to post on LinkedIn. Connect with your network. So you're going to go out, hopefully after tonight or today, whatever time of day it is where you are, you will be inspired to go out and start connecting with people. Well, if you never post anything, they're going to forget about you pretty fast. So sharing content. If you, if you reach out to me and say, hi, Louise, I work in the field of, um, I, help, I help law firms special, who need a specialist in this particular area of law. And I say, oh, that's really interesting. I'm quite, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in what that person's doing. Um, but then you never post. Well, then I'm not going to remember you and we're not going to have much of a conversation and you're just going to disappear into the thousands of people in my network. Um, but if you are showing up and talking about um, the genome cluster or the law firms you work with or the passion that you have for the cause that you support, then you're going to become much more visible and stay top of mind with the people that you're trying to actually get in front of. If you don't post any content on LinkedIn, we will not know how amazing you are at what you do. That being said, you're not going to post, hey, I'm amazing at this thing, look at me, type content. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> um, but what you can do is you can talk about the area that you work in in a way that brings other people in with you. So example, um, I might talk about how... Um, how important it is to update your skills section. I might say, here's why you need to update your skills section. I last updated mine a month ago. And then I'll say, when did you last update yours? So my network are learning. Oh, I didn't know I should be updating my skills section. Louise says this, this, and this. Well, I disagree with that. So I'm going to comment and tell her I don't agree with that. Or they'll say, oh, I, I haven't updated mine years. That might be their comment or they'll say, oh, I just did it. I just did it two months ago um, and I completely agree with you. And suddenly we're having a conversation. Um, but because I started the conversation, I'm seen as the person kind of leading the conversation. So that applies to whatever you do and whatever you're an expert in. That's how you can raise your profile and become known as one of the leading people in your industry, because if you're never starting the conversations and maybe you're joining others' conversations, but if you're never starting them, people won't see you for the expert that you are. It also really helps to build trust. So if you reach out to me and connect with me and say, hi, Louise, I, um, I have a podcast about female entrepreneurs. Um, and I see that you're a podcaster too, and I'd like to add you to my network. And I'll go Ooh, immediately, immediately, I'm off to look at your profile, see what your podcast is called. I'll probably go and check out the podcast and see if there's any ones I want to listen to. Um, and then if you are a podcaster, I hope you're sharing your podcast weekly on LinkedIn and starting conversations about what's in the podcast. So I can see that you are someone who does what you say you do and that we connect over that and you build that relationship. And that's, that is how you use LinkedIn. How does posting content help to grow your network? So sharing content with your network raises your profile, not just with them, but with their network too. So for example, Elizabeth Hall, I'm coming back to again. I know that Elizabeth, um, I think she shared my webinar and all of a sudden I've got other people who work in education um, who are in, who suddenly are going and checking out my profile to find out who I am. Who is this person Elizabeth's talking about? Um, so when you engage with people on LinkedIn, their networks suddenly become aware of you too. When you engage with your audience, uh, so say, for example, I start a conversation tomorrow about something and you reply to it and I reply back to you the more conversations we have on that, the more people will be showing that post, okay? So you're not just sharing with your network, <clears throat> you're also sharing with the other person's network. Now, we'll talk about tagging in a wee while. You don't want to just tag people in your posts so that their networks see you, because that's a bit sleazy and we're not there for that. 
We're not there for that. We're not here for that. <laughs> um, you're on the wrong webinar, if that's what you're here for, um, which I don't think any of you are. So what do you post? Now you've talked to us about posting, Louise. Like, what do we post? This is your question. Here are some of the types of content you can post on LinkedIn. Text posts still do outperform all other kinds of posts on LinkedIn. Text only posts. Obviously the text needs to be interesting and conversation starting and people want to engage with it. Don't just share a big rambly long post. Um, they call these things broetry. It's like, hey bro, uh, and it's like the, every other line is a space. Uh, you'll, you'll totally see this next time you, you see one of these, you'll be like, oh, that's what Louise is talking about. It's like 20 lines long, but each line is one line and then it's just a new paragraph, and another line, a new paragraph. And <clears throat> it doesn't really say anything. Um, maybe at some point it tries to get a bit controversial. Um, unless it's specifically about what you actually do for a living, uh, it, it doesn't really work. So try to avoid those. Um, you can tell I've got quite strong opinions about what works, what doesn't work on LinkedIn. Um, but text posts definitely, definitely, definitely still outperform everything else on LinkedIn. That being said, I like to mix it up. So I, I tend to do text posts, links to my podcast, and I do LinkedIn Live. Video content, <clears throat> I really like it on LinkedIn. It is still, I will be honest, it is still challenging to get people to see your video on LinkedIn, even though LinkedIn claim that it's the most popular kind of content. It's not my experience. So it would be interesting um, if you had other experiences of that. If you're going to do video, you must add captions to it because nobody watches LinkedIn with the sound turned on, okay? Document posts are brilliant. I love doing um, what you call a carousel post. I have a video on how to do that on my YouTube channel. Um, YouTube, uh, just go to YouTube and look up LinkedIn with Louise and you'll see it. Um, they get really brilliant reach because every time someone clicks on the next slide to see what the next slide says, it counts as an engagement on LinkedIn and therefore it shows it to more people. So the last carousel post I did, I think uh, within... 24 hours had 5,000 views. Uh, you don't get that with other kinds of content. So definitely try those out. Um, polls work really, really well, uh, but don't do them all the time. That would be my recommendation. Images do work. I mean, you, if I, you listen to me and say, Louise, you said text only posts outperform everything else. I mean, they do. I, I've looked at the metrics and measured them, but everyone else has got images. So what's she talking about? <laughs> Try it out yourself, measure your results and come back to me in a month. And if, if you prove differently, I'm more than delighted to have that conversation with you. Articles on LinkedIn are brilliant. They are longer form pieces. And one of the things I do with clients is we will write a longer article that a person can use on their blog. And then we take snippets out of it and start conversations around that as content personal updates on LinkedIn. So you can take the effort to get an article written for you or write it yourself and then reuse it for loads of different things. So that's a really good um, piece of content. And then you can create events like the one that this webinar was attached to as well. Starting conversations. If you take nothing else away tonight, take this away. When you post on LinkedIn, don't say I'm sharing an update, say I'm starting a conversation. So talk about something with your network and ask them a question about, about it. Be of service. What do they want to know about? Um, teaching people stuff works really well. People like to learn how to do things, um, something they didn't know about before, but keep it at a level where don't be too highbrow so that your audience read it and, and don't really know what you're talking about or think they'd look foolish if they answered whatever you asked. So try and keep it at a level where someone like me can join in the conversation that you're having about that topic, okay? 
share your industry news, absolutely, but make sure you say why you're sharing it. So don't just share a news article or a blog post or a company page post, start a conversation around it, okay? Use the features that LinkedIn offer. So you can add video posts, you can upload videos straight from your phone and put little overlay stickers on it, add the polls, upload documents, and just make it a really, make your profile interesting to the people following you so that they want to follow you and engage with you. That is um, a big tip. You can use hashtags on LinkedIn, and that is a way to get found by other people. Now, interestingly, LinkedIn news team and LinkedIn creator are watching for people using hashtags and they're picking people up and sharing their content. So for example, the great resignation is a hashtag. And if you're writing a thought leadership piece on that, the great resignation being the fact that apparently is it one in four uh, people want to leave their jobs um, because of the pandemic and are leaving their jobs. And uh, it's quite hard to get staff and keep staff and retain staff at the minute. Um, it's called hashtag the great resignation. So if you wrote something really thoughtful and interesting about that, you may find that your piece gets picked up and shared by the LinkedIn news team. And that's happened with clients of mine in the past. And that's a very exciting moment when your client messages you and says, oh my God, LinkedIn news have just put my post up as their you know, piece of content, one of their pieces of content for the day. Yay, how exciting. <laughs> All right, uh, to tag or not to tag. This is my idea of what an influencer looks like. <laughs> I think I'm quite far off, quite far away from that myself. But um, don't tag people on LinkedIn unless you are sharing a piece of content they've created or you genuinely think they'd be interested in what you're talking about. Um, people tag other people with large networks all the time because they want to drag that person's network over to their post. And it doesn't really serve you very well. And if the person that actually has a large network and this is happening to them all the time, it can be a wee bit annoying. Um, if it's happening to you all the time, you can go into your privacy settings and turn off the ability for someone to tag you. Um, <clears throat> I don't recommend you do that because you do want to be tagged by somebody when it's relevant, um, but try not to over tag people yourself. All right, how often should you post? If you are still wary of posting, um, start with commenting on other people's stuff. So get your profile sorted, your photograph, your headline, um, and your about section in order. And start commenting on other people's posts who are strategically connected to you. By which I mean, does this person have, could they be a client or do they have people in their network who could be your ideal clients? And um, so be strategic about where you are spending your time commenting and try and get up to posting yourself on your profile a couple of times a week. And if people start to reply to your comments, and it does take a bit of time, it takes a bit of effort, um, reply to every single comment that you get to keep that going. All right, we're getting to messaging now. And please, 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 please um, add a note. When you send a connection request to somebody, tell them why you are connecting. It makes you stand out so much in the, in the connection request inbox. Um, and it doesn't have to be like overly complicated. And, and please don't send a sales message. Hi, I'm connecting because... I want to tell, you know, I, I work for a software company and we think you would really benefit from this, blah, blah, blah. Please don't do that. But please do add a note because you're starting a conversation with somebody then straight off the bat. And that is a great thing to do. Having conversations on a one-to-one -one basis with your network on LinkedIn is extremely powerful. People will get to know you. They might not work with you, but they will get to know you and what you do and they might recommend you to other people. They certainly, the next time you post something, they're far more likely to comment on your post as a result. Um, but definitely this is where the business side of things happens on LinkedIn. It's all about building relationships. So stop thinking of LinkedIn as the place to promote your business through social media and start thinking of it as your online network that you're building relationships with. Um, and when you approach it from that angle, it becomes an enjoyable place to spend time, to be quite honest, because you fill your network full of people you're interested in, who are interested in what you have to say. Um, 
but you actually actively enjoy going in and commenting on their content and, and connecting with people and business comes as a result. So you take the effort to connect with people, stay connected, comment on their content, comment on their posts, engage with them and keep yourself visible and top of mind because when they want the graphic designer and you're the only one that they remember because they're commenting on that funny thing that you shared last week, um, then they're much more likely to reach out to you first. Okay, you can use job search. If anyone here is looking for a job, job search on LinkedIn um, is really powerful. If you are recruiting on LinkedIn, get a company page up to scratch and make sure that you're showcasing what you do on that company page. Um, if you, this applies really to if you're, you know, if you are trying to pitch for a piece of work or you want to be invited to speak at a conference or you want to pitch a podcaster or something, engage in that person's posts, follow them, comment on their stuff, but not like in a stalky way. Um, and just really build up your profile in front of that person. So your key things you want to think about are optimize your profile, understanding what, when and how to post, Always connect with a note, build on your relationships and use LinkedIn messaging. 